And joining us live from Perth now is Madeline King, the Shadow Resources and Trade Minister. Appreciate your time. Firstly, congratulations on your promotion in last week's reshuffle. Why are you back in Perth? It seems like ACT Health offered exemptions contingent on a negative COVID test. It appears you could have stayed on to see that first parliamentary sitting week through, but you've flown back here to a city under double threat now of a COVID outbreak in the bushfire in the Perth Hills. Indeed. Thanks, Ashley. And yeah, thank you um, for the congratulations on the resources portfolio on something I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, having care of uh, for uh, Labor. Um, I, I did go back to Perth. Uh, I, the, each of us as members of parliament have different responsibilities and different roles in the parliament, also different responsibilities to our electorates and, of course, uh, different private and personal responsibilities. So uh, a few of us made the decision to return home. I am very grateful for ACT Health in the options they provided to us, which was to be able to return home. But equally, if you're able to meet a number of their conditions, uh, you're able to stay. Uh, I, I had some concerns about uh, what was going to happen at home. Um, I, I don't have any more information than anyone else, but... Uh, I had some concerns about the ability to return to Perth and not everyone perhaps uh, <laughs> shared those concerns as much as me, uh, but some did. And on that basis and other matters, I did decide to return home to my community. A poll published in the West Australian today suggests that the SNAP lockdown is widely being supported by Perth residents, although there is obviously some strong criticism in some quarters. We've seen comments uh, from the likes of Peter Dutton suggesting it was an overreaction. We know the economic pain will be palpable. What's your view? Well, West Australians don't need to take any advice from Peter Dutton. Uh, this is the man who is overseeing the Ruby Princess. He holds a home affairs portfolio. He pretends that he might run quarantine, where in fact he, he just uh, <laughs> completely it walks out the door when any resp Commonwealth responsibility for quarantine is mentioned. So we won't, uh, here in Western Australia, be taking advice from the likes of Peter Dutton on how best to keep this state safe. Mark McGowan's uh, lockdown uh, has, uh, I mean, it's welcomed by the community. We've, we've had a, uh, a, a really pretty normal 10 months compared to much of the rest of the country and always in the back of everyone's mind, I think, we knew that at some point the inevitable would happen and that another case would arise. Uh, uh, the, the reason to have such a, 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 sh a quick, short, strict lockdown is for the health of the community, but equally for the health and the long-lasting health of our economy. Uh, we know the resources industry can continue to operate uh, through this lockdown uh, if we make sure it's done properly. And, uh, you know, I commend the resources industry, the Chamber of Minerals and Energy, all the companies that have voluntarily decided not to uh, change shifts this week while the lockdown is on to prevent extra travel and taken out extra precautions. They've done this before. Uh, in, in March and April, they created the resources uh, fly and fly out travel bubble. They will do it again if they have to. And, and because of the lockdown that the Premier of WA has introduced and the actions of the resources industry, uh, that industry will keep going and therefore keep the country's economy going. And it's no less than that. It's the contribution of the Western Australian resources industry is the backbone of the Australian economy. Well, the resources sector, no doubt, will be hoping, like all West Australians, that the lockdown does finish on Friday. We're waiting to see today's numbers, which will no doubt influence uh, whether or not the lockdown is extended, whether or not it was inevitable. We're obviously talking about a hotel quarantine failure here, which Mark McGowan has addressed. So certainly debatable if it was inevitable or not in the West. I mentioned your promotion to the shadow resources role. It's one the CFMEU in New South Wales. Looks like they're pretty unhappy about it. Peter Jordan telling the Australian that he had to Google you to find out who you were. He suggested as a West Australian that you don't understand coal. How important is coal to Australia's future and does coal fit into the goal for net zero emissions? Coal is, has been an export industry of Australia for a very long time. And as long as there are markets that want to purchase that coal, there are, there are large coal mines, smaller family-owned uh, coal mines uh, on the East Coast that will continue to fulfil fulfil those international contracts. And as well they should. And I support those companies, those owners and those workers to continue to do that work. The, the coal market will change as any market may change depending on 
uh, what uh, other people, other countries want to buy for their energy mix. Uh, and, and until that happens, you know, we, we Labor and I support that coal industry. How much of that reshuffle was about shoring up support for Anthony Albanese and how confident are you that he will lead the party to the next election? I am entirely confident. I, I'm a, a great supporter of Anthony and have been a, a fan of his uh, for a number of years, for many years. So we've all watched him in Parliament for a long time and know he's uh, the most experienced and uh, skillful uh, leader that that we have and that we we want to. I really want to get behind. We all do the reshuffle. Any reshuffle offers an, an opportunity for uh, a, a re refresh, a bit of a reset in certain things. And uh, just like any job that any of us have in any career we may be in, uh, a change can be good, a new outlook, uh, new insights should be welcomed. And uh, it's a, a good team, a great team that is uh, you know, already working together really well. There's been a refresh on the coalition benches as well. The new Trade Minister, Dan Tian, has made it clear that he hopes he can reset Chinese relations. China doesn't seem to be jumping to make that happen, despite Mr Tian's best efforts. Is it clear to you that China is running a campaign of economic coercion against Australia? I, China has changed, and a, a lot of that commentary across many uh, fora reflects that, and, and I agree with that. It's a... Uh, the, the leadership has taken different stances. But the, the truth is uh, the Chinese-Australia Free Trade Agreement is, is just over five years old. Uh, and so we've gone from this pinnacle of a relationship to these debts. And it's, it's hard to understand fully why this has happened, but what we know is that the coalition government has had oversight of this. And my concern is that there is no plan to shift the dial, to try and repair this very important relationship. But and Minister Tian, I know he's trying, and I welcome the letter that he sent to the new uh, minister in place in China. And I, I do hope uh, a response comes. Uh, I know people might like it to come sooner, but uh, ministers uh, in our government, let alone other governments, aren't always the most prompt in their responses. So I, I do agree with uh, Minister Tian that patience is required. But nonetheless, you can have patience, but you also need a plan. Uh, and, and what is the plan uh, if this initial reset doesn't work? What, what is the plan to drive uh, investment from other nations? Uh, this, this government has been in government seven years and, and, and their diversification plans are in disarray. Like they sign free trade agreements and then um, put their feet up and think the job is done. But that's not the truth. True diversi diversification takes many, many years and, and dedicate a commitment of all ministers that have a hand in export industries. And Minister Tian himself was higher education minister not long ago. And, you know, we've overseen the destruction pretty much of that export industry. COVID obviously has a massive part to play in that, but also uh, raising fees for local students, not helping out international students that were trapped here. I mean, he hardly has a good record on one, our highest, our biggest services industry in this country. Madeline King, appreciate you joining us live there from Perth. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much, Ashley. Best wishes.